All right, cheers and welcome to each and every one of you to Happy Hour with Lincoln, episode number 73, which has somewhat become sort of a question and answering period, sort of a podcast, somewhat of a rant session for me. Who knows what you're going to get, but the basis of this is for me to share my education with you on a weekly basis, the things I've learned over two decades of trading, taking your questions, sharing my thoughts and feelings about trading, what I think is the most important things in the attempts, as I say every week, in the attempts to help you become a more professional, well-rounded, and successful trader. As always, if you have anything you'd like to say, bring it my way to support at thelinkenlist.com. So here's what I want to do today. I want to do a 2018 review. Not like everyone else, though. I want to talk about my best and my worst for 2018. So I am going to share with you some of the bad naughty things that I did last year because hey I'm a human being I've been saying that from day one I'm not perfect I make mistakes too even though I've been doing this for 20 years even though this is my source of income for a living I still screw up from time to time I still let my demons come out of the closet every once in a while hey we're human we all make mistakes right so I'd like to share those with you to let you know guys I'm just like you but I want to tell you some of the things that I do to help me get through that. Now, if you remember last week, I gave you the five by five rule, which is starting out the year, trying to help your goals by saying, write down five of your strengths, go to five of your strengths and then move to five of your weaknesses. And then just kind of put yourself in a position with the people or the things that will help you fix those five. So I'm kind of do something like that with you today by talking about my best and worst of 2018. And another reason I want to do this is because a lot of traders feel that during their struggling period, once they become successful or have a short term period of success, they feel like it's like a sort of set it and forget it. Like, okay, I've made it. You know, some people always ask me that question. How did you know when you were going to make it? What's it feel like when you made it? Guys, I haven't made it. I'm just like everyone else going year by year, day by day. And you're know, luckily for me, it's stretched over 15, 16 years of profitability, but still, you know, it's just a day by day. Th every, every trade is a trade by trade. Every day is a day by day thing for me. And that's always how I've been living it here for, for the last several years. And it's, and it's worked out. So there's never this period of time where you're just going to set it and forget it or reach this plateau and just sort of ride it on out because the market's ever evolving. It's constantly changing. I've said before that when I first started out trading, I did my first trade was in fractions. That's how long ago it was. I traded in fractions. And when I first started out, news came through news wires. They still do, obviously, but you got a lot of that stuff from newspapers, actual hard copies of newspapers or magazines or stuff like that. Now this whole thing has changed where you have social media having all of this quick impact and all this other stuff in the hands of the trader now, which is kind of changed the game a little bit and the way the market behaves with more algorithms and stuff like that things have changed the way stocks behave has changed so you have to change all the time as a trader and if you want to stay in this business for a long period of time and make a career out of it, you will constantly have to evolve and i think every career is like that they, they all change so let's talk about that i want to talk about some of the good things that i've done this year as well as the good trades we'll start it out and then go to the bad the more I go through this trading career, the less I, I rely on technical analysis. And I've always been a big advocate of technical analysis, you know, support and resistance. I've done dozens of videos and it's a beautiful thing when you get technical analysis right and you can use that technical analysis in your favor and it's still the source of most of my trades. However, after being in the market and being a market participant for so long, as time goes on, I rely more and more on my gut. I hate to use that word as saying, oh, it's a gut feeling or a hunch, because there's always that difference between your gut and your marriage to biases and stuff like that. But seeing so much and having so much screen time and spending so many thousands of hours in front of a computer, it's sort of like sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm one step ahead of the market. Like I know what this next move is going to be. And that's kind of a product of technical analysis. When you think about it, what technical analysis is, is you see a pattern or a certain setup. And based on that certain pattern or setup, you know what the future result has a pro high probability of, of being. But just being in the market, you got, you got a feeling of how the market's going to react to certain news events, how there's always this dark cloud over it, whether it's a Brexit, whether it's the election, whether it's tariffs or whether it's interest rates or whether it's high oil or, or whatever it might be. There's always a dark cloud trying to press the market down. And in some way, in the end, it always finds its way out. So what I'm saying is as years are going by, 
I'm using less and less technical analysis and more just relying on my ability and the, and the lessons I've learned from having so much screen time. And that's why I always tell you guys, that's where that learning curve comes from because you're going to have to be in this, get shaken out a few times on trade, trades, get confused here and there, get the wool pulled over your eyes a couple times before you start really catching on to how this whole game works. And the longer I go with this, the less technical analysis I'm actually using and the more I'm just going based on what I think is going to happen in the market. And that's worked out real well, to be honest with you. It just It's worked out really well for me. So that's one of my strengths is to be able to see what's going to happen in the future and most of the time predict that with, with some pretty good accuracy if you saw some of my stuff while the market was going down i posted up tweets maybe i'll post them up here saying this this is going to be the bottom this is where the reversals are going to be and all that kind of stuff so that i've gotten a lot better at and i've gotten a lot better as well as just trying to you know manage my emotions and, and my competitive nature with the rest of the world just trying to get more and more comfortable in my own skin over, over the last couple of years. You know, I've always been kind of, well, I've always been a competitive individual and I've always kind of wanted to, you know, approval from other people as well. So as years have gone by as well, I kind of tapered that down and just said, look, I'm my own person. This is what I do for a living. You either are on board with me or you're not. If you're not, that's fine. No hard feelings. If you are great, that's just the way life goes. And I, that, that's maybe that's not just a necessarily a, a great thing I do for trading, even though it's per, somewhat personal, but it has helped me in trading. It's just to really focus more on myself, my goals and what I'm trying to capture here in, in the market. And, you know, being 50 years old, you know, how much, how many more years am I going to continue to trade? It'll be a long time. Don't worry, guys. And what, what do I want this, you know, what, what do I want this legacy or so, so, so much to be about me, that kind of stuff. I've been very good at those kinds of things. Now, when it comes down to good trades that I made, there wasn't any big time stock to just rule the roost this year like it has in the last couple of years. It was a combination of three, some which I've spoken highly of and talked, and one is Tesla. Maybe I'll post some charts up here too for you. The other one is Apple. And last, of course, is King Baba. As you know, I've been yodeling for a long time about Baba. Now I've played both of these, I mean, all three of these stocks, I've played them to the long side and I've played them to the short side. And I've done that several times, hundreds upon hundreds of times throughout the course of the year. But those three stocks have normally worked out for me every time I've traded them. There's other ones like Nvidia that I've done well with or Win that I've done well with, but I've also had trouble with those stocks too at certain times or Netflix. I've done well with that at times, but had trouble with it at other times and so on. But those three were really my workhorses for the year. I've also added to my business a little, I've been doing it over the last couple of years, but I've also added a different, a little bit more strategies to it, which is selling calls and puts on some of these stocks that I believe are going to hold certain prices. And there's been some really good premiums and stuff like Tesla, Apple, and Baba. And they worked out real well, especially at the beginning of the year when the market was really grindy. And then a little bit later on when some of this stuff was coming, coming back again, we've done a lot of those trades. So again, when I talk about strengths and weaknesses. When we look at our strengths, understand that there's things that you you know always want to continue to improve on your strengths as well. So even though I have a strategy that's worked for me for well over 16 years consistently, I'm not opposed to adding new things as the market allows it. So that's something that I've slowly put into what I normally do. I haven't stopped doing what I like to do as far as buying and selling and how I short stocks and all that good stuff. But I have added a lot of option calls selling and option puts, selling those things, gathering premiums on stuff that I think are going to hold certain prices. And it's made up, this year was a little higher, was about 30, 30% of everything that I pulled in. So it kind of went from just, you know, maybe two to 3% the first year, 10% the second, and now 30%. So as I'm slowly adding it in, you know, it's starting to take a, a bigger piece of my business and it's, it's causing my numbers to go higher, which is, which is great, right? So I've been able to do those with those stocks. Now, let me talk about some of the bad stuff, the bad, bad stuff. I still occasionally from time to time, and sometimes because I now have the power to add options or I feel that I understand options and I can hedge certain positions and things that I hold, I have a tendency sometimes to hold them a little too long. Now, fortunately, because of my experience and some of the things I do, even when I get myself into, let's say for lack of a better word, pickle, when I get myself into a pickle, 
I'm a, kind of, I'm I'm able to work myself out of that jam. Some, of course, I have losers. Sometimes they're losses, but there are sometimes I constantly find myself going back into some of those older habits I had in 02 and 03 and stuff like that, where I would just bag a little too long, or I would fight with the trade a little too long throughout the course of the day before giving up on it. When I when I think the signs were pretty clear that you know it wasn't going to work or it wasn't going to produce value. And I think for us traders, we we, we kind of all fall into, into something like that. Now, fortunately for me, it's not a chronic habit that does significant damage or, or causes me a living. But, you know, at one point, this was something that was chronic. And what I'm saying about that is it's that battle between winning versus losing. It's the thought of, I just want to be called a winner. I don't care how much I win. I just want to be called a winner, right? So I would do anything just to win on a trade, whether it was 30 cents, I would feel that's awesome. But I, whatever it is, I'm not going to accept or call myself or say that I lost on a trade. So I just won't take that loss, right? I mean, we've all kind of been in that mentality and that's okay because we're competitive people. That's what we do. If we're trying to trade stocks, you're competitive. I said that before, you're trying to do something better with your life. You're naturally a competitive individual. So. I, I've tapered that back many times, but I still find myself falling into that problem, which there's no value in that. I need, sometimes I need to understand there's no value you in that. Now, when it comes to stocks, there were a couple of those that I fought a little bit too hard. Two stand out to me that really, really were just bad on my part. And one was Chipotle, CMG. You know, I shorted this thing. I was high conviction on shorting that thing and you know I got burned a little bit. It wasn't burned to the point where I couldn't make it up. I still finished green that month. I wasn't, you know, collecting singing songs on a corner for a soup can, but for me and what my average loss is and when I'm talking about discipline, I let it get the better of me. I let my discipline, I let my guard down, I put let my rules flex a little bit and I paid the price for that one. I took a pretty hefty loss on CMG. And then with an options trade a little bit later, one of the ones I was doing so well, I was on a roll and, you know, I got stuck in a little bit of a wayfair on, on a shorter term sell off. And then they went into earnings and I got kind of, kind of, kind of beat up on that one a little bit. Now, CMG was a lot worse as far as the financial pinch versus the wayfair. But like I've always said, the thing was there before they got to the point where I had capitulated. There were other signs along the way that says, dude, just give up. Dude, just give up. Dude, just give up. Now, part of that, those rules being slacked is I was also making other really good trades. So it didn't look so bad or feel so bad. And then, like I said, I ultimately finished green every month anyway. So it wasn't like it was killing me or I had the money. Now, when I think about it, that's what's really bad is just because you have a lot of money or that you're making a lot of money on trades doesn't mean that you can let this punk in your portfolio screw up your day. You know, it's kind of, I, I've referred to him to people in the room. It's like, it's like the tax man trade. It's like, you're out here making all this money and then you got to give a bunch of it to the tax man. So it's like, you're paying this loser tax every day. You make this really great trade. You bank a couple of grand. You're like, oh, but this thing still is still working against me. I'm still losing a few thousand here and there on this one. And it's like, you can't, you can't seem to really gain any traction that way. So even though I made money those months, even though everything went well, that's still no excuse for, you know, breaking rules. I mean, basically that's what I did. I didn't have to, they did not have to be as bad as I made them out to be. So still I made those mistakes, but overall, when I look back at the year, I did some good, I did some bad. So I want you guys to kind of take that with your business. Again, think of the good that you did. Take that time to go back and say, this is the good things that I had done. These are the good trades I made. How did I make them? What went well for me? and work on those. Then take those bad and say, what could I do? What are the signs that I could have seen to help me, help me not make that mistake or catch that mistake earlier so I can reduce the damage. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching this happy hour as always. You know where I'm at. Here's cheers to you. Have a great trading year. Take care.